2014 was, was my first year on air as a presenter at Cape Talk, and it was a year of two big trials. The one was Oscar Pistorius uh, going on trial for the death of his, his girlfriend, Reba Steenkamp. The other, the Sri and Devani trial. You must remember this was a trial that was a long time in the making. Uh, by the time Sri and Devani was finally brought back to South Africa to face the music, four years had passed since the death of his bride, Annie. She was killed in what at first it looked like a hijacking gone wrong. Uh, while they were in Cape Town on their honeymoon. It was only a matter of hours before the speculation started, though, that there was much more to the story than, than what it seemed at first glance. And I remember instinctively turning to a colleague the day we heard that news and saying, something doesn't add up here. The early trials immediately after Annie's death in 2010, 11 and 12, the alleged hitmen, the people behind the scenes organizing this crime, uh, they had their days in court, they received sentences. Sri Devani himself though, was allowed to go back to England and it then took a lengthy extradition battle to get him back to South Africa to face his own trial. That trial we followed day after day on my show on a story that ultimately went nowhere because the, the case never even came to the point of a verdict. Halfway through, the judge had no choice but to throw it out of court due to the lack of sufficient evidence to continue the prosecution. For me, one of the big questions that was never answered was the why. I mean, you had to buy into one of two theories. Either Sri and Devani orchestrated this crime himself, and uh, there was the, the subtext of him having led this double life involved in, in, in prostitution, involved in gay sex, uh, sadomasochism, etc. The other alternative was to believe that this was nothing more than sadly a typical South African crime. If it was that, why would two people let out of the car and not the third? Why would so many of these people involved in the crime commit to taking such a risk for so little money? I think all of us felt the horror of, of, is this really the country we live in? That you can arrive in South Africa, arrive in Cape Town, and literally within a day of arriving, you have found a hitman on a random corner and bought their services for less than 20,000 Rand. We'll never know. We'll never know the answers, I don't think.